Well, hello everybody, welcome, my name is Ruby Dung, welcome to today's episode, and as you may be able to see by both the number and the name of today's episode, today's episode is episode 250, or 250, 250 maybe, but the name of the episode probably should set off some bells because today, what, is a world tour. That's right, a world tour. Every 50 episodes, I give a world tour, except for one time where I gave it for episode 45, the first ever world tour I ever had. But yeah, today's a world tour. I have done a lot in this world, so we have a lot to get through. So strap in. Today's going to be a very long episode, probably one of my longest, to be honest. So I hope you guys are ready, because today... I'm gonna get started with it. And the first place we will be starting off with is the building I was just on top of. This is the viewing observation area. So this is just a little room I made at one point so that way I can overlook the actual base itself because I realized there really wasn't any good spots to overlook it anymore. So I wound up selectively going through and finding a spot that would be nice and good so that way I could look over the base. And this is it. It's not much purpose other than that, but it's just supposed to be a little room where I can overlook the entire base from a single location. And there's two areas you can get into. This lower area where you can walk in from the shore, or this area over here, which is a lot more level, so that way I can wind up going over to the main base. Now, from here, I have only two locations that I can really go. I can either head up here and wind up going into the base this way. I never use this entrance, like, ever. But there is this entrance, which I use all the time, which is you cross this bridge. This stairway up here does, goes to absolutely nothing. It is purely decorative. Uh, and then the stairway up here, which is to enter the main base itself. And then finally, I guess I technically have this entryway, which is up this water pillar. But I will be going through the base. I would show you up here, but it's just a long stairway to absolutely nothing. So just pretend that doesn't even exist. And if I head up these stairs right here, we are going to be getting into the main base. There's a mushroom up here, so that way I can eat. Uh, I'm probably going to be using these guys quite often in today's episode, so get ready for that. But... This here is the main base, in which case, if I were to walk forward here, we actually go to the first ever project I had in this world. I guess it's an extension of the first project I ever had in this world, in which case, this here is the mob farm. Almost completely, actually, yeah, I believe the actual spawning platform is completely unmodified since the beta days. It is still the exact same as how I had it back then, and it's still completely operational. The actual mob sorter is still functioning the exact same. Everything is nice and good, but this is one of the oldest projects I have in this world. Only recently did I put a ceiling on it, though. It was just kind of open for a very long time. Over here is where I collect all the string from the spiders that die, and over here is where I collect all the other mob drops. And like a little bit of string, because every once in a while a spider will die down here and a zombie will come by and pick up the items. It works perfectly fine. It's a salute. It's only was really a problem until zombies could pick things up. In which case, if a mob died all the way down here, a zombie would just come along, pick up the items, and then it would go into the system over here. So it wound up being a non-problem. So I just never treated it as such. Then I have these chests over here. There's definitely nothing really in them. I think over here, yeah, dies and name tags. I only have a few. And over here is my little train set. So this is a furnace minecart that goes all the way around the base. And uh, it's just like a little decorative thing I made at one point. It it was the beta days. You just kind of made random garbage and <laughs> just kind of were like, oh, yeah. And also, I was just fascinated by finding furnace minecarts for a very long time. For some reason, I just saw furnace minecarts and was like, yo, there is some cool stuff that you can do with that. It would like... Oh, I nudged it. <laughs> it's gone forever. In which case, yeah, the fur furnace minecarts had some weird stuff. But right before that, even, I wound up having these two chests here and my ender chest. I don't really keep anything in my ender chest because uh, one day I had a glitch and it completely wiped every item I kept in my ender chest. So I just haven't been keeping anything in my ender chest for a while. And typically, whenever I do use my ender chest, it's for temporary movement, wherever I need to move mass amounts of resources from one location to another. I just grab an ender chest and then put another ender chest somewhere, drop everything in the ender chest, fill my inventory, run over to that location, drop off the items in my inventory, scoop it out of the ender chest, and put it in that location. So, don't really use the ender chest too often, but I'm sure I'll wind up using it a lot more. Currently, I just keep everything that I need in my inventory, 
Because, yeah, if, if there's, like, temporary resources, it's just... Ender chests have gotten to this point where there's so many items in-game that feel like they're important, but there's not enough to store in the ender chest, so I wind up storing nothing in it because of that, so... Uh, probably not the best. And then here, going all the way around this central pillar area, is my storage system. Almost completely unmodified from when I first made it. Matter of fact, I think I made this in episode 6 of my series, so a very long time ago. And in these chests is some of the actual, like, items that I have gotten from doing stuff. So you might notice there's, like, rotten flesh, bone meal, and string, and feathers. These feathers right here, actually, fun fact, are the feathers from zombies, back when zombies dropped feathers. So, right here is this entire chest undiluted. I have not touched any, like, of the actual feathers in here, mixed them with any other feathers. These are exclusively feathers gotten from zombies, I believe. I don't think I have ever... If I ever did mix these with chicken feathers, it was back in the beta days, back when they were undistinguishable anyways. And then I keep rotten flesh up here. But that goes all the way around. I think I have, like, yeah, a bunch of enchantments in there and stuff. And that goes all the way around this base. And I get over to this location, another ender chest, along with some chests, and then uh, a bunch of random stuff here, along with this little water pillar thing. In which case, I'm going to continue walking around the main pillar here, and that is because we get to more of these chests here, and then we get the first discrepancy. This is a villager that I have rails to make sure that mobs don't walk towards them, a fence, and some blocks. So basically, this guy is very highly protected. Now, why is he so highly protected? That is because if I open up his inventory, he trades for 10 emeralds, diamond picks, his blank diamond picks, which is an amazing trade for those who are not aware. That is an absolutely amazing trade because typically you would be looking at like, if you're trading a pick, you would probably be looking at like 13 emeralds for an enchanted pick or something like that. And then you would have to buy it again then you would have to put them in this little inventory square right here to make a normal pick. This guy does it for only 10. Typically, it takes like a half a stack of emeralds to get a stack of pick, to get a single pick. This guy only takes 10. And then on top of that, scrolling a little ways, he does diamond boots, and he does a diamond axe, and he does diamond pants, and most importantly, I think, uh, oh wait, I guess he does enchanted uh diamond chest plates i thought he did regular chest plates but yeah i basically everything i have in my inventory is gotten from that guy well these objects right here are gotten from that guy because he is an amazing deal uh continuing along here a little bit just more blocks that are a part of this until we get to here uh you'll notice there's no under chest up here that is because this is the collection from my iron farms just into these chests right here all three of these chests are dedicated to that, but they priority order from here to here to here. So, they only fill up these chests whenever this one gets full, so, yeah. But if I were to head inside here, we get the XP system. So, open up these chests, nothing here. But if I were to swap this mode think from auto to XP, swap that over, this is back whenever XP was first added and you needed to get to level 50, I had probably a five episode thing of me just trying to experiment with different weird ways to make XP farms, because I was really needing XP in my farm world. In which case, as I can show you here, what you would do is just simply stand here and just punch, and then you would get XP. This is the only modification I have ever made to the actual main mob farm, is this little XP thing back when they first came out. I never use this thing anymore, like, ever. There's so many better XP sources in my world, but this is something that I still just kind of have around. Continuing to walk all the way around, we get all the way back to the start here. In which case, if I were to head all the way over here and get to the first path, uh, going in a clockwise manner, I can go all the way inside here. I might as well show off the main pillar uh, first. In which case, the first layer here is quite simple. This is where I keep all of my furnaces because I do a lot of smelting. I haven't used this room in a while because I haven't had the big, big smelting drops. Ah, that's not true. I guess I did it for some bricks. But yeah, this is what the main area here is all about. There is some uh, just <laughs> some things that I still need to clean up a little bit. There's all these little trap doors for the mushrooms. But that, like, that's the main thing that's going up on this layer, except for I have my nether portals here and another water thing to get to the next layer. In which case, if I get to the next layer, 
It's just completely open up here. I don't know what I'm supposed to put up here, but I'm keeping this open for whenever I do. Over here is all the hoppers that I have for the actual iron farm. They just go across and down, in which case I show you all the way down there. In which case, from all the way up here, I actually can show you the inside of the main pillar. There's a zombie that is uh, trying to hunt down my little villager boy. So I, good thing I have that guy cased up. But yeah, this is what the inside of the whole thing looks like. It's not very pretty, hence why I try covering it up as much as possible. Next up, instead of heading all the way up the pillar here, that's the main thing to show you really in this main area. In which case, if I splinter off, this is the first ever build I believe I made. Either that or the second. I actually think it might have been the second. But this is... Actually, no, it's not going to be the... It's going to be the first branch off. That's the actual term. It's either the first or second branch off. In which case, this here is if I walk into this area, this area doesn't really have anything going on except for a single mushroom and some en an enchanting table that I haven't really used, and then something branching off from over there. But if I head up this area, this is a part of the base that I haven't really used a lot of in a long time, is my tree farm. Two layers it grows oak trees, because that was really the only tree that you could grow back then. There wasn't any other type of tree, it was just oak trees. In which case, what you would do is go along these little paths, break it out, then loop around, break it out here, loop back around here, break them out, and then loop back, break out, and then you go up to the next layer. In which case, as the leaves decayed, they will fall down to the water here and all flow into this little central pillar area and flow all the way down that, in which case, whenever they reach the little end of that little water pillar area, well, not water pillar, water row, uh, they would wind up being ejected here onto this hopper, which originally wasn't here, obviously, but I wound up adding it much later, in which case this here just picks up all the saplings, apples, and any stray logs that wound up falling down. So, that is what's going on with that, in which case if I head all the way over here, this, hopping all the way through this little doorway here, is the second entrance I talked about. In which case, I never use this, but uh, it's something that does exist, because there's not really much on this side of the base, and it's also not very pretty. Uh, but if I head all the way up this, you probably can make a guess, but another one of the farms. The exact same. Originally, this did grow birch trees whenever those began kicking around, because I was wanting multiple types of trees, but I wound up never really using it for that, and most of this base is made out of, uh, well, first off, you can tell the planks, but birch logs used to give the exact same types of planks, these types of planks, whenever you crafted them, so I just wound up using uh, them for these little pillars here, because these wound up being the most expensive part. These uh, oak pillars, they wound up being very expensive, because... Theoretically, you could just wind up turning one of those logs into four planks, which, ooh, man, that gets costly real quick. So, every single one of these pillars had to have been chopped down by a tree in one of my tree farms. So, that's a little thing that uh, I can uh, say. So, wound up farming up with that, a lot of that. Then, all the way down here is an extension I also made significantly later whenever they changed up how mob spawning works. Because mobs used to spawn randomly, but at one point they made it so mobs just permanently stick around. Because a mob would spawn and despawn, spawn and despawn. That was just kind of how it always worked. But then they made it once a mob spawns, it doesn't go away. A passive mob would be specific. A passive mob would always stick around. I was like, you know what? I want to make a chicken farm because chickens laid eggs and those are kind of important to making like a couple of different types of food. So over here is my egg collector. There used to be a lot more chickens in here, but uh... There's like this little glitch where they'll clip through the water and then be running around the base and then I'll just have to kill them because I don't want to deal with them. And then uh, what would happen is I can pick up some of these eggs and show you. Um, in the event I wanted to actually uh, get chicken to eat, I would walk over here and throw up an egg into that ceiling, in which case a baby chick would fall down, fall into the water stream, and be flown all the way into this area here. In which case, once they were uh, swam into here... They just kind of sat in this little spot, and I would let them all grow up, and then I'd come along with a lava bucket, click it right here, and then it would burn all the little chickens sitting in the spot, and then drop everything that they had. I felt it was a very um, uh, efficient way of designing it, and uh, this is back before uh, chickens wound up having variable heights, depending on being a baby or an adult, so I just wound up having to let them sit here and grow up the full duration so that way I could come along and click on it and then get the whole thing in one batch. So there really wasn't a efficient way of doing it, but that's how I had to wind up doing it. 
Then coming alongside here, this is underneath another one of the parts of the base. And if I were to click this button, this is a, uh, mm, I would say fairly outdated part of the base. It, also, I can just speed through this thing super easily. This is the vault. This contains, used to contain some of the best items in my world that were the most unique. Now it only contains two of them. In which case, the two were, items are a dragon egg. Very obvious. I honestly think I should probably wind up making a special location just for this item in general. That kind of showcases it. But then there's the second item. The actual most valued item that I have in my world. A diamond pickaxe with fortune 3 silk touch 1. So this is back when uh, enchanting was first added to the game. They didn't have enchantment exclusives. There was no defining thing that said... If one enchantment's on a thing, the other enchantment can't be on there. Meaning that if you were- but there also was no anvils. Meaning that you had to luck into this, and in a very- an episode a very long time ago, ooh, this would have probably been sometime in- ooh, I'm guessing the late 40s of my episodes. I wound up doing a bunch of enchanting in that episode, a whole bunch of it, getting to level 50, enchanting, getting to level 50, enchanting, like, doing a whole bunch of that, and in one of those little batches, I got a Fortune 3 Silk Touch. And it's been sitting here ever since inside my vault. Just, I'm not going to lose that thing. It is one of the most prized possessions I have in my world. So, oh man. Uh, then coming alongside here, we have a way of getting up. I almost never use this. I think I've used this once ever. And then over here is my cocoa bean farm. Uh, there's no ceiling here apparently. But uh, yeah, this is just to collect cocoa beans, in which case all I do is uh, click this button, water will flow down, and then after the water goes away, I run around and plant the cocoa beans. Uh, so that is for this wing of the base. Alright, so that was that wing of the base. Uh, you may have noticed I didn't show off this little bit of the area because I'm going to get around to that in a little bit. This area is kind of maze-like, so I have to do a lot of looping back to certain locations. So, over here from across the villager, this is another very old part of the base. This over here is the old passive mob farm. I'm going to get up into the water stream here a little bit, so that way I can show it to you guys. But, this here used to be where I got all my passive mob drops. So, it was right behind where the hostile mob drops were. If I come all the way out here, you can see all the glass, uh, all of the grass platforms are still here back from when I first made it. So that is still like up here. They are obviously not in use anymore because they changed how passive mob spawning works. And I kept the kill system all the way up here. What would happen is a mob, it would either be a sheep, a cow, a pig, or a chicken would fall into that system if it was a too tall mob. So either a sheep or a cow, it would be filtered along this side and then drop down here and just fall to its death. Or if it was a pig or a chicken, it would go to this side by being pushed along this side. There was a lava suspended up there for a very long time and a mob would fall through it. If it was a chicken, they slow fell, would get caught in the lava and would just burn away. I didn't care about collecting feathers. I almost never collected feathers. So they would just fall in there and die. But a pig, they would fall through it, catch fire, land on the ground here, and then after they landed here, they would burn for a very short period of time, in which case, boom, they would drop a cooked pork chop, which I would come over and eat. So that is the main thing over here. I used this primarily for healing for a long time, but then they got rid of the passive mob spawning stuff. Alongside here is another old part of the base. This here is my wheat farm. Ta-da! <laughs> Once again, very old school. What you would do is you would walk all the way up here, place in a water bucket, and the stream would wind up getting separated in six different locations. And the six locations would drop down, pick up all the wheat, then flow down to the next layer, and go all the way down until they fell into this little valley down here, a little canal, and then they would be deposited right here. So I basically would put in a water bucket, collect everything, and then all I'd have to do is go back and replant, which I still hated doing, but <laughs> that's kind of what I had to do. Uh, continuing in a clockwise manner, we get all the way to over here, in which case, uh, continuing straight just a little bit, this here is my rail. It goes to another one of my bases. Uh, I remember losing my mind with having to figure out how to get a, uh, like to go through a rail. Uh, Spends a long time on that, but if I were to uh, climb up here, let's start with going up, because I think up's the simplest part. Um, oh yeah, I have to <laughs> go to a center pillar. Um, 
I'm gonna go all the way up here. This over here is my bedroom. I never use it, like, ever. This is a bedroom. I never use it. I think I've slept in this bed twice, ever. Uh, I simply just don't use it because it's so out of the way, and there's nothing in these chests. These chests are supposed to contain, like, uh, emergency stuff, or when I respawn, I can equip up. I never sleep in this base, so I never- in that bed. I sleep in the base, but never in the bed. I have a- I have a completely separate bed that I sleep in. In which case, heading all the way down here, heading down this staircase, we are going to be getting to... Uh, need to make... Yeah. We're going to be getting to... This is my zombie farm. There's a zombie spawner right beneath this floor. It has been retro-converted so many times now. So many times. In which case, this initially started as a feather farm, and then I was like, uh, I never used the thing, because I never needed feathers, but then after, like, the XP system came out, I retrofitted into an XP farm, and then I was like, okay, use that for a very long time. Matter of fact, if I head over here, there's a brewing stand where I would make a ton of splash potions of healing, and splash that on the zombies to kill them in mass, and get a ton of XP. Uh, that was my main, uh, system for using this farm, but then I designed other better experience farms. I think I just have a bunch of random objects sitting in here. Ooh, I have diamond pants and diamond leggings just sitting down here. It's kind of like one of those moments where you find a winter coat and find a bunch of random objects shoved in it from last year. It's like, oh yeah! And then I have, yeah, a ton of enchanted books and then one enchanted shovel. So yeah, th this is like, I think, the area that I've done the most enchanting at, just because this was my experience farm for a very long time. Uh, but I haven't used it in a long time because I have better experience farms, and then I retro committed it to just collect rotten flesh. Like, I could AFK down there, collect rotten flesh, simply because I can trade rotten flesh for emeralds. So, that's kind of all it really does now. Then, heading over to this staircase, this one I just have to drop down because it's significantly faster. I get to my mine! Woo! Uh, so this is my mine, this is where I got a lot of my underground resources. Except for if I head all the way down this location a little bit, this here is the first ever project I had in my world. So, back when this world released, this was in Alpha 1.2, mobs, when they were spawning, relied extremely heavily on the actual level. So, I was like, okay, I'm going to design my mob farm to be as low as possible. And I dug out this massive area so I could begin setting up spawn platforms. And this is me beginning the process of that. I since abandoned it because I believe they said they removed it, but then, like, yeah. A whole bunch of weird stuff happened with all that spawning things, and then I just wound up not doing it. And then, over here is probably one of the worst farms I have in the entire base. It has been precisely zero help, and I mean zero, is my slime farm. I need to design a new slime farm, like, desperately. Uh, but this is supposed to be a slime farm. I think I've gotten three slimes out of this farm total, I think. Um, in which case, I don't even know if it was the farm itself randomly in this underground area. But this is kind of what it is. The first ever project I have in this world. Uh, it's not really doing anything. It's just kind of sitting down here chilling, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't really need it for anything, so. Uh, one day I might wind up actually turning this into a mob farm. Who knows? But uh, currently it's not... And this is just a very long shaft going, uh, I don't even know how far, significant distance off into nowhere. For me, just mining stuff, I could upload a video of me just walking down the full length of that thing, but it would legitimately be like a 30 minute thing of just me walking down the tunnel. It's a very long walk, because I just mined for so much in that little tunnel area there. But yeah, now it's time for me to get up and go over to the other split. Alright, back here at the passive mob farm and heading in this direction, we get to a very old part of the base. I don't even know how to show this off properly. I guess I have to destroy this part and then pillar up. But, this is a very old farm that was finicky and broken for a very long time in this world. It is my mushroom farm, aha! So what would happen is up in a crevice up there, Water would spill down, and then it would split into these little tunnel areas, and walk, go flowing down, pick up all the mushrooms, and throw them into this little canal. Oh, man. It didn't work for a very long time, but eh, it worked eventually, and then mushrooms do became not very good. Mushrooms do used to be the best item in the game. Then, uh, they, uh, did some, uh, 
mm, like, things where Mushroom Stew became not very good. And then they made it good again whenever they had mushrooms, because it became basically just carry one bowl and you can have infinite food. Like, if I just head over in this direction and, uh, jump up here, boom, Mushroom Stew, eat it. Boom. Mushroom Stew, eat it. Boom. Mushroom Stew. <laughs> I basically have infinite food as long as I have one of those guys sitting around. But yeah, that's basically what this used to be, because food didn't stack period dot back in the day. If you have food, you couldn't stack it, simply because it would be too spammable if it did. And they eventually got rid of that, and um, Mushroom Stew would be very good, because you actually could kind of stack it. You could have one bowl, a stack of red mushrooms, and a stack of brown mushrooms. It would take up three slots, but that was a stack of food, which was amazing back in the day. Uh, but yeah, looking over around this location, heading over here, this is just a small little detour. This is an old cow farm that I designed at one point. It doesn't work anymore, but this is a pretty cool cow farm. Uh, what, what you would do is you would come up here, the cows would, uh, jump around this location, you would sit there and feed them, then they would, uh, eventually grow up, and then you would flick this switch down and back up again, because they would sit here and cram and cram and cram and cram, and whenever you swap this down, they would eject out, equalize, and then you would put this up, and then maybe split in half, so half over here, half over here, and then I would put in a lava bucket up there, and they would slowly die. <laughs> uh, and their little drops would flush all the way down and fall here, so I'd just stand here and collect the little drops, and then uh, I would do uh, breeding for this thing twice, and then do it again, basically always making sure I got a gain. Uh, down this location going straight. I know I'm not doing clockwise, but there's a reason for it. I get to my pumpkin and melon farm. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, these are just massive stacks of, uh, I should, I can open this up. Just massive stacks of pistons that are pushing these things down with these little plants next to them. Uh, they're, it's like not the most effective, but I'm not using pumpkins and melons on mass. These are just so that way I always have them very readily available if I do need them. I have some more mushrooms right here, and walking down to the center here, we get to my gold farm. Not much is here, but there's a little bit. It's not supposed to be, like, some mass gold farm or the best you can make. It's just supposed to give me a little bit of gold whenever I need it, so just a little bit of a thing. In which case, t same principle as a lot of my farms. They drop down and drown up in that little system. Hoppers below it, they collect here. In which case, heading over in this direction, we see my passive mob farm this is the new one whenever the old one broke so over here is where i collect all the wool and then over here is the redesign for the cow farm in which case what would happen is i sit here and breed them up the babies which are one tall would flow into the system over here and then wind up being on top of that little uh, trap door in which case whenever they grew up they would wind up growing into that lava there Nowadays, if I were to remake this farm, I would swap over that trapdoor to be on the top of the block, opposed to the bottom of the block, which is a very easy fix, but that's what I would personally do now, knowing some game mechanic stuff. In which case, uh, swap that over, in which case they would grow up into that lava there, and then, boom, they would have their drops down in that chest whenever they did. So, that there is the actual, um, uh, cow farm. Heading over in this direction is going to wind up being another part of the base that I'll show you later. But heading all the way down here is the end of this terminal. We get to a bunch of villagers in cells. Each of these villagers have fulfill a small role. In which case, I believe this guy has some books that are pretty good for me. Yeah, Unbreaking 2, but I believe it's a better book summary. Yeah, Silk Touch, that's it. This guy has a Silk Touch book on loan. Uh, Silk Touch books are very good. I always have aneurysm trying to get Silk Touch books in this world, and this guy just trades for them for 10 emeralds, which is an amazing deal. I believe this guy, yeah, for one emerald, I can get three uh, bottles of enchanting and get some glowstone. Good rotten flesh trade, apparently, because I <laughs> blacked it out. Uh, less good glowstone trade. Yeah, I, get, I don't remember why I saved this guy. I think I was just wanting a good rotten flesh trade or something. And then this guy over here. The best villager I have, by far. It's 25 paper for an emerald, and then, if I go a little ways in, 29 paper for an emerald. So this is, like, a very glitched villager, because of how villagers used to work at one point. But this guy refreshes paper trades using paper trades, so it's very strong. Up here is my villager holding cells, in which case, what happens here is that a villager will fall in from my villager breeder and get stored into one of the cells over here. Uh, there is a lot of cells, and I do mean a lot of cells, 
And whenever a villager is in a cell, no other villagers will get stored inside of it. In which case, it allows me to basically go through here and see what all of the trades available are. So that's kind of like the main purpose here. Oh, uh, basically, you, a lot of villagers that I have in this world, the particularly good ones, the ones over there in those cells, uh, the ones all the way back at the very start, uh, all came from these cells here. So that way, I could do like particular trading. The only villager that I have on like trade standby that isn't from these cells is the one over at the main base. Hence why he's over at the main base because uh, he is a very old villager as well. Um, in which case, I might as well begin heading all the way down back to the main base location because that is this wing of the base. All right, over back here, uh, a little ways down from the tunnel where the passive mob farm is and where the villager is, continuing in my clockwise maneuver, this is going to be over where the XP farm and the iron farm chests are. Heading down this wing of the base from the main sector, we get to the first ever uh, project off connecting from the main base. So in case the curious are curious, it went the mob farm up into this main base area. Then it went over to this farm, which is my old sugarcane farm. So uh, what this used to be was basically a bunch of sugarcane. That, like, <laughs> and then I walked down, uh, break them because I was needing sugarcane for bookshelves. Because if you couldn't tell... I use bookshelves quite often in this space because I think bookshelves are a cool block and all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's kind of like what the main thing here is. I retrofitted this thing to be a um, uh, intersection at one point whenever I stopped having use for this because up above is my actual sugarcane farm now. So this is where I get all my sugarcane. There is a bunch of pistons pushing off sugarcane into some water streams and then I collect them in this chest over here. Heading straight forward, we are going to wind up getting to my mushroom pens. So this is where I keep all my mushrooms at my main base, so that way I have a location to begin moving them to whenever I need to move a mushroom to a high demand location. Heading down over here, we get to a sector that I said I was going to talk about a little bit later. This is a connector to the, one of the other wings, just simply because uh, I wanted a shortcut. <laughs> I don't know why I made this, but... I'm glad I did because I use it a lot. <laughs> it's a lot faster to wind up going that way than to go the whole way around. But going down this location over here, we are going to wind up going through a lot of hallways. And I mean a lot of hallways. Um, to eventually get to this off branch over here, it probably looked like uh, no real change for you guys there, but... Over here is where I keep my horses. This is supposed to be a horse project where I'm trying to breed the fastest horse, but oh my gosh, is that just boring? It's so boring to breed horses, guys. I tried it, and it was just not fun. I was just like, it's not important, and they're impractical. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm keeping the horse breeding. One day I might continue it if they wind up making it a more interesting part of the game, but I, I have no confidence. I think horse breeding is going to continue being a very boring thing in the game. Uh, but then branching off from this is a little intersection area, just hovering around a little point. And then walking down here, we get to my mini farm. So there is uh, some chests with some bone meal in it, some dispensers. And if I flick this switch, uh, they'll wind up dispensing that and pushing that little farm block up. That basically allows me to plant a seed, it insta grows, and then pops off. That's what that farm's main design is, and it works pretty well. Uh, basically made that one wheat farm that I made a while back useless. Over here is a speed tester I made for the horses, so that way I can measure their speed. It goes all the way up to the fastest that a horse can go in the game, so that's basically what this little thing over here is. I use this very rarely because it's, I, it's a part of the game that I just don't like anymore. <laughs> uh, continuing to go down the line over here is my new tree farm. In which case, what this is, I would plant a tree here while standing on this pressure plate. The pressure plate uh, connects a signal going all the way over and across onto this dispenser, which is filled with bone meal, and has chests around it, constantly flooding it with bone meal. And then whenever a log grows in this spot right here, which basically means it needs to be a two tall tree or higher, which it is, to my knowledge, impossible to get anything that is weaker than that in-game. But uh, if there is a block here... This whole system will trigger and all the push pistons will uh, push forward and they'll slowly chain all the way up and before going to this block, one block will be above this torch and then they'll slowly extend to fill up this room with logs and then I go through and break all of them. 
It is a very nice tree farm. It allows me to get a lot more logs a lot more quickly whenever I need them. Uh, but it does take a while to use this farm, sadly. Then, continuing to head down this location, we get to a bit of a specialty room. This here is my wooden slab room. As you may notice, there's a bunch of missing textures. Matter of fact, the floor is based off that missing texture symbol that I have in here. In which case, what this is are unburnable slabs. They have a missing texture in game, meaning that they just, that they have that, but whenever you place them down, they look like a wooden slab and they don't burn. That is because they are wooden slabs back from whenever they had the stone modifier. So if I were to open this up, uh, this little item tag 0044 means that it is a stone slab. But, uh, they since got rid of being able to craft these, so you can craft actual normal wooden slabs for a whole myriad of reasons, but yeah. This is what happened to all the ones in my world. Uh, a couple of them still make up certain parts of the base, but I have them all sitting here inside of this room, so that way I can easily access them. Then, branching off from that area over here, this over here is my pig pen, because I realized I had basically a farm for every single passive mob in the game. I had one for chickens, I had one for cows, I had one for sheep, none for pigs. Simply because after beta one after beta 1.8, pigs became basically useless. They only drop a pork chop. And back in 1.7, that was amazing because they were the only mob that dropped food. Matter of fact, they were the best mob in the game. Because you could wind up killing a sheep from maybe making a bed. And then after you have a bed, you basically are good forever, but you always needed food because the only way to heal up damage in the game was with food, so pigs were amazing. Nowadays, they don't do anything. Pigs are just kind of a weird mob. But one thing that they're still special about them is you can put saddles on them. And a long time ago, I had an episode dedicated to getting every achievement in, that, in the game. One, every single one. Uh, and for that, I had to do the Flying Pig achievement. And whenever I did the Flying Pig achievement, did the whole thing, put a saddle on pig, rode him off a cliff, all that. But, uh, whenever I was like, you know what, I want to make a area for all these pigs, I was like, you know what, I want to get that pig. And then while I was trying to get him, he wound up dying. Uh, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to turn this monument into a memorial for him. So, over here is the pork chops that came from him whenever he died, and the saddle that he wore. So that's what's going on with this little thing in memory of my old flying pig. He was so nice. Then, head, jumping all the way over here, I have an ender chest with some dogs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's not really important. Heading down this hallway over here is the extension. Oh, there's some hostile mobs up there. In which case, this over here is an extension. There's nothing yet, but this is where I plan to have the base grow in the future. I have nothing currently in it, and it's also not lit up apparently. But yeah, that is where I'm planning for the base to extend to in the future. So, oh man, I'm hoping to actually uh, be able to begin working on that somewhat soon because I am wanting to uh, <laughs> uh, have the base be able to be, you know, extended. <laughs> oh wait, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna refill, refill. <laughs> uh, some of those mushrooms are just kind of wandering around randomly. But yes, uh, taking a turn here now, we are now going to be getting to another layer of the base. So uh, let me actually uh, lie down here a little bit. I want it to be daytime for uh, this part of the base because uh, I don't know why I'm being paranoid. <laughs> but if I hop all the way up this stream here, um, we are going to be getting a very interesting view of the base here, in which case, yeah, lots of logs and stuff. This is all the weird intersection things that are going around, in which case, heading all the way up to this area here, we are getting to my iron farm, the original. Uh, I got a whole ton of villagers in this area. This whole room here used to be filled with doors because I misunderstood how iron farms work because I was reading the wiki on how to do it and the wiki said that uh, the equation is equal to like one iron golem spawns per X number of villagers and the way to get more villagers, more doors, and the wiki basically said the more doors you have, the better. 
but in reality there's like caps to that and a bunch of weird rules but the wiki like villagers were new and iron golem spawning was new and all of that kind of stuff so everything was just kind of vague so i just filled this area of doors and was like yeah totally gonna work and it didn't uh but yeah this here is the iron farm the original i've had this going for a long time now in which case this is where i'm getting all the iron basically in my world because i don't go mining too often nowadays then moving all the way around here we get over to my spawn room my spawn is located like right here or something i think it's located in like these four blocks just sitting right here but yes if i were to die in this world and i do not have a bed set i spawn inside this room just this big nice room for me to spawn inside of uh, that allows me to get into the main base immediately walking down this uh, little rampway here i can jump off as a slime block all the way down there that i can try jumping onto or i jump into the water next to it and then i can run all the way into the main base then heading all the way over here we are going to be entering uh this is the main pillar base again so if i were to try peeking out one of these windows i think i could probably show the banner uh i don't think it's gonna happen but this is the main base this is the main tower and this is the last layer on the main tower for now. Future layers may be added at some point. But this here is a bulk storage. So what it is, I'll throw blocks into one of these chests right here. And then it will get sorted all the way around this main pillar here and wind up sorting into one of these chests. So I have a couple of different chests for basically items that I get en masse. Oh, hi there. You actually scared me. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm curious where some of these guys come from sometimes. Well, yes, looking around here, uh, this is basically some of the blocks that I get the most of. And then on the inside here is where I can see the redstone for all of the sorting. So that is nice and good. And then I get to one of the locations that I passed by saying that eventually you guys will be able to see it. If I were to head all the way down this water stream, I would get to that one water stream by the tree farm. There's the tree farm right over there. That's the second tree farm. That one water stream leads me all the way up into this storage area all the way up here. Then if I were to go this direction, I get to be above the passive mob farm. This is just kind of a small intersection area. Heading down this direction, I am going to wind up being right above those two water streams right next to the cocoa bean farm. Uh, if I were to pop in here, yep, you can see these two little pillars. This is right next to the cocoa bean farm, where I'm capable of getting all the way up here. There's nothing out here. This is kind of like a dead end in the base, so... Uh, <laughs> but if I ever buy the cocoa bean farm and need to get up here, I suppose it works. <laughs> uh, but yes, I then run all the way out this direction and down here. I am going to wind up getting to the gold farm. Look at all these nether portals. <laughs> so these are all the nether portals. A nether portal has a small chance at a given time spawning a pigman. And whenever he does, he falls into that water stream and gets funneled all the way to the a center area. I'm trying to figure out where that is. So here's the main thing. Aha, there it is. That's the little thing that they fall down whenever they wind up collecting. And they fall down there and drown. Heading all the way over to this area, this is going to be the Infinite Breeder. There's two villagers at them there any given time. And then whenever night comes, any babies that exist will wind up rushing to the doors, in which case on the other side of those webs are the doors. But the thing is, a mob, whenever they enter a web, cannot go up. They can only go down. And those webs are suspended above water blocks, meaning that they'll rush into the web unable to go up into the door and will slowly fall down to the web into the water stream and be forced into my villager system hence why there's only ever two villagers in here at a given time because apparently it's flawless i'm going to say that because i'm wanting it to break i'm just kidding please don't break i don't want to fix it <laughs> then heading all the way down here this is another part of the base down here is where all the mushrooms were and this here is a massive staircase that is going through so many parts of the base back when i was planning on using horses to get around i couldn't get a horse up a water stream that just wasn't a thing you were able to do hence why horses are just bad uh but at one point i was like you know what i need to turn all that water cases into stairs and this is a massive staircase system that goes all the way around the base it is an absolute i've never used this staircase because it takes so long to get up but it's a thing that exists i suppose so that's just kind of a thing oh man 
uh, I passed a little thing here, in which case, looking down this location here, this is going to wind up leading me all the way back to the main storage system. Aha, uh -huh, main storage system. Then if I were to just head all the way back here, uh, just heading all the way down this hallway and back through here, we are going to wind up arriving back at the villager farm. This is the iron farm. So uh, this is technically the first of the iron farms, but uh, if I were to head all the way down here across my glass platform, another one of the useless staircases, heading all the way across here, we're going to wind up eventually passing this. This is a little water stream in the event I'm stranded in the middle of that lake down there. I can use this water stream to get all the way up to this part of the base. Not very useful, but it exists. This over here is the second iron farm. Aha! Uh -huh. There is no real reason to walk all the way out here i guess currently but there might be some extensions so <laughs> uh that's kind of just what's going on over here just iron golems are spawning inside there drop down and they wind up dying in that little chamber and they get washed all the way down through that little tunnel area there and they wind up getting collected by actually no there's hoppers down there because they're you at one point in that little tunnel i was planning to have be water but then i was like you know what it's going to take so long to move through water that I just swapped the whole thing over to being hoppers. That way there's no despawn timer. So, got that going for me. But yes, coming all the way back around here and going all the way to the actual uh, jumping platform. Aha! <laughs> Very close to the actual main shore here. This is how I get from up and down the main base. Up here is the water stream that gets me all the way up to my spawn room. But heading all the way down here, I am now back on the ground level back where I started the world tour, but there's still like one or two things that I can show around here on the ground level. The first of which is going to be, heading a little bit a ways, is my Celebration Cannon. Aha, uh -huh, made out of obsidian and has this. so what it is is what i'll do is uh put some tnt in a circle here and then i place one tnt on top of this lily pad and then from a distance i try shooting a bow at this button in which case when i do the whole thing will light the tnt except for this one lily pad slow signal will go through into this dispenser here which has arrows it will shoot an arrow through the lava and light the tnt because then an arrow will become on fire and then the whole thing will explode here launching the TNT up, which is on a delay, and then bang, explodes in the sky. This is what I had to do for fireworks before fireworks were a thing. But yes, this is my little celebration cannon. <laughs> then if I try to uh, get myself through the mountains here, there is going to be two things to show you. There is this old project uh, that I'm probably going to wind up taking down at some point because this is it's just not good. Uh, this is supposed to be a very big jack-o'-lantern. Uh, it's supposed to be pixel art of a jack-o'-lantern using only pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns to make because I was planning for that to be a little testing hall so I could design a little redstone mechanics and stuff because a very long time ago, I had a little platform, not in this world, on a separate world, but it was for this world. Aha! Uh -huh. This, in which case, what this was, uh, in a different world, was something called Pumpkin Laboratories, because I'm a massive fan of Portal, and I just wanted to, I was wanting to make my own Aperture Laboratories, basically. <laughs> uh, but yes, I was a little platform in a different world, where I would just have different redstone mechanics, because of, like, single-player commands or whatever the heck, and then be like, okay, this is what I want to do, and then... Be like, okay, so that's how I'm going to do the redstone, and then we'll try building it in this world, for example, or some other world. I don't remember, but it was a bunch of different stuff. And I just wanted to surround it with pumpkins because I wanted lighting. But yes, that is, if I recall correctly, everything that is going to wind up being here at the actual main base. This is uh, Base Alpha, the main base. Um, also, a little uh, banner above the door for an R for uh, Ruby Dung, so everyone in case you're curious why that was there. But now it is time to jump all the way up this water stream here and flow all the way into these nether portals because there's stuff in the nether. Surprise, surprise, I know. There's stuff in the nether. Uh, but popping all the way outside here, this over here is my nether hub. And you might notice there's water here. That is because uh, there used to be an old glitch where you can get water in the nether. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this decoratively. And decided to place in a whole bunch of water in little locations here. So that way I could have, for my nether hub, little water breaks. Uh, but heading all the way down this tunnel, we are going to get to base beta. Uh, which is a base at I... 
never go to. There is <laughs> no reason to go. It was useful at one particular point in this world's history, and then I made another hub, and it became immediately useless, which I am sad to say. But if I were to pop all the way through this portal here, I am going to be taken all the way to base beta. Um. Uh huh. <laughs> Um, interesting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> why is... Why, that's okay. I don't know what's going on here. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's a lot of big men and some of them have pumpkins on their heads. Uh, all right. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, this over here is base beta. I guess the portals here are broken or something. I guess that makes sense because uh, there, used to, there was an old glitch a long time ago. Uh, probably should sleep because there's no torches out here. <laughs> uh, oh, that's right, because pigmen are monsters. Uh, maybe if I uh, uh, no, there's gonna be pigmen everywhere apparently. Uh, maybe I can sleep inside the base. Okay, no, it looks like pigmen slowly filed into the base itself. Oh golly. Um, yes, hello. I'm inside the base now. <laughs> because this is base beta. It is a railway base. In which case, that rail that you saw by one base, it leads all the way here. In which case, I also did mining here. Oh yeah, the portals are broken. Lovely. <laughs> That's a very old glitch from a long time ago that I guess I just didn't fix, which makes me annoyed. Uh, maybe I'll break this rail that uh, I'll be able to sleep. Aha, yes. But yes, this here is base beta. It has rails and mining, but uh, I did all the mining in this area like that I'm comfortable doing, so mining is kind of a non-thing anymore. So it's just kind of for aesthetics. And then, obviously, I have more rails branching off from here, going to other bases. But then I made a nether hub, and this place kind of became useless. Hence why um, uh, those nether portals have not been fixed. Aha! All the pigmen disappeared. Lovely. Well, not all of them, but a good portion of them. <laughs> uh, but jumping all the way back down here and heading back to the portal now. Heading from this portal down this direction... We are going to be getting to another base of mine, also in uh, another base that I don't really go to too often. I just kind of feel like focusing on, like, my main base primarily, hence why it's, like, so big and expansive. Just, like, I like having one base in my world, and then I design other bases and never use them, because I just I just really like my main base. I just really like my main base, okay? Um, heading all the way through here and down. We're going to get a ton of Pikmin again! Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Uh, this here is the hole, the dig project, with a large dome above the side, and then a massive lava pool all the way down there. Aha, uh -huh, pigmen are flying down my staircase. <laughs> my ladders, aha, uh -huh, some are dying down there. <laughs> it has a whole bunch of lava, big dome. Uh, this area it looks very impressive, but, uh, it, there's nothing here outside of that, because if I walk a little ways down it, there's gonna be a bunch of pigmen, apparently. And then, like, this weird brick building thing with some sandstone. It's underwater. It's supposed to be an underwater bait. This part of the base has been redesigned multiple times. Because originally, it was, like, this weird brick building that was floating above the surface. And I had, like, some branching stuff off of it. And I was like, you know what? This is just, like, a more annoying version of my main base. <laughs> and then I got rid of it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this weird dome thing. And then I designed that. And I was just kind of like, oh, what do I do? And then I designed this under, well, I designed this underwater thing well before it. Because this was, this was back in the beta days when I designed this room. I was like, you know what? I'm going to have an underwater base. And this just didn't work out. Because it was too annoying to work with. Having an enchanting table and a bunch of chests around here. This, this base is just, I want to like this base. I really want to like it. But, oh man, it's, it's just such a, it's, I put so much work into it as well. This big hole that I dug, it was like, oh man, so much work, and I just never use it, like, ever. <laughs> which makes me really sad. I hate having things in a world that I never use. In which case, uh, walking down this way is a little bit longer as well. I'm going to wind up having some more stuff to show going down this hall, because I did continue to dig further and get some more things. I am going to wind up having two portals, and this is going to be uh, some of the last two portals heading in this direction. Uh, this is a very minor farm, and I do mean a minor farm in this world. Uh, this here is my old... Um, aha, because the portals are still broken. <laughs> this here is my old obsidian farm, in which case there is a chunk error here that I love showing off because I think it is super funny. <laughs> this is a single chunk that was generated and uh, around other chunks. Um, in which case I just thought was super humorous. And then, 
poking all the way over there, there is the first ever village generated in my world. Uh, back whenever villagers were first added to the game, back when villagers had the word testificate that appeared above their name. Well, appeared above their heads, so, uh, yeah. Not a, not a lot going on out here. One day I might make something, but once again, it's just kind of one of those things. I just feel super motivated to always work on my main base. I never want to work on any other base. It's just the main base. So, because of that, my other locations have just kind of, like, sat around just completely undeveloped. <laughs> I know, that massive hole there, the massive glass stones, like, oh, that's undeveloped? Yes, yes, it is undeveloped. <laughs> But alright, heading back to the actual portal here, we are going to have a couple of different paths we can go, and I'm going to be showing you my favorite part in this world outside the main base. This up here is the water project, all the way, just basically a bunch of water on the top of the nether, so that way I can access water anywhere in my nether, back when I heard that they'd be removing, actually being able to put water in the nether, because they made it impossible to get ice with silk touch in order to fix it so that's something that was absolutely fun but um yeah put a bunch of ice up here in the nether melted it got a whole bunch of water up here and because of that i wound up getting one of my favorite things inside this base in which case jump all the way down here Wee! Owie. we are going to wind up getting to nether water base which i think is base gamma uh, swimming a little ways through your magic capable of moving through here very nicely, a lot more better since I last came here. But yes, this here is the base. I actually really like the look of it. Uh, this is a base that is designed on a single island surrounded by water in the nether. Um, sadly I don't use it too often, but, uh, I do really like it. Um, there's not too much. There's a little path over here from where I kept just trying to design a farm, never really could. Uh, going down this tunnel here, we actually get to a fairly important project in the world. This here is the episodic log. Every single episode I've ever done in this world logged in here that is extremely outdated. Every time I go to this area, I always say, I'm going to keep this thing up to date. And then I never do. I think the next episode, I consistently like, I am not updating that. Let's see. Yeah, it's been 50 episodes just about. I guess closer to 40. It's like 41 episodes. Yeah. Wow, man, I just told oh, that. I just have a hard time updating this room for some reason. Every time I go here, it's like, man, I gotta do some updates. It's 50, it's 50 episodes out of date, man. <laughs> this is so rare for me to wind up going into that room because it's so rare for me to be like, you know what? When was, when was episode one uploaded? Uh, let's see, October 30th, 2010. Mm, yes, yes. What about episode two? Uh, November 6th, 2010. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Episode 3, November 13th, 2010. Ooh, who would have guessed? Yeah, I, <laughs> I get the pattern. It's, it's a one episode a week, so. <laughs> uh, but then heading all the way up here, we get to my storage system. And then my chicken coop. Uh, is this thing broken or something? No, it's just full. Okay. Uh, probably throw out all the feathers from this thing. Uh, yeah, just so uh, th sort I of throw out all the feathers. I don't know why I'm doing this right now, but I really don't want feathers in this thing. I also just filled my inventory up with feathers, I realized. But yes, this is an automatic chicken cooker. Um, oh my god, the feathers are jumping everywhere. Get that out of here. <laughs> Over here is a smelter, so that way I can, uh, cook up stone and stuff. Uh, did I run out of lava buckets? I'm guessing I ran out of lava buckets. Yes, I did. But yes, this thing is supposed to, so that way I can fill in lava buckets into this thing, filter in a whole bunch of cobblestone. I think this whole thing is, uh, yeah, it's almost out of cobblestone, actually. And turn that into smooth stone, because I use a lot of smooth stone in this world, particularly on this base, uh, because it uses a lot of uh, stone slabs and uh, stone bricks. And at the main base, I have primarily stone flo flooring, so yeah. Then heading over here, we get to my birch farm. This is the only surviving birch farm I had, because for some reason, I just had this phase where I was like, you know what, the best farms are birch farms. And then this is like, oh, this is like a pretty small birch farm, actually. It's not that big a deal. We hop into, ah, uh, we wind up hopping into this little stream up here and going up a little bit. There is this birch farm all the way down here. And then if I go all the way up here, ta-da, this is the main birch farm. That I wound up using a lot, actually. And by a lot, I mean a lot. <laughs> this was like my main wood farm for a long time. Uh, don't use it anymore because I don't need birch wood, like, ever. 
Uh, but yeah, that's what the main part of this space was. And if I head all the way over here, we get to my nether wart farm. Aha! In which case, it's very simple. If I push this button here, it causes all the nether wart to pop off. And then what I can do is after I go through here and pick up all of the nether wart, I can head to the other side of the farm, push this button here, push the button here, and then just go down the line and plant in all the nether wart. And see, I got an eight nether wart gain off that, and then I do that for each of them. I don't use a lot of nether wart in this world, but that's a little farm for it, um, whenever I do need nether wart, apparently. But yeah, that's kind of like what the main thing going over here at this base is. Oh, I guess I forgot to show on this side. I also do have a uh, little farm up. Uh, <laughs> I guess a bunch of pig better <laughs> filled up this farm at one point. Oh, that's absolutely lovely. Um, it's supposed to be a sugar cane farm, but I guess it filled up a gold at some point. So, oh, that's just absolutely lovely. I'm guessing this hoppers. He yeah, has hoppers filled with gold. Oh, boy. This hopper also- no, this hopper's filled with eggs, okay. And this hopper has nothing! <laughs> okay, that's just- why doesn't this hopper have anything? Oh, man. Is this- is this farm just broken? I guess the farm's just broken or something, I don't know. This isn't something I'm gonna be fixing in this episode. Uh, but this is supposed to be a pumpkin pie farm, because I'm supposed to get sugarcane here, eggs here, and pumpkins here. Uh, but as you can see, this whole thing apparently is just absolutely broken. So, yeah, apparently anything that I make that's not in the main base just absolutely just gets destroyed. It's just absolutely broken. So, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I just really want to like this base, but anytime I make something here, I just... It either breaks or isn't very useful. I guess there's one other thing I can show you, because this is an auto smelter. It's one of the best auto smelters I have in the world. Because, uh, if I jump all the way down here, um... Ooh, that water updated, actually. Wow, that took a long time. Uh, but down here is where I get all the lava to run my system. So uh, what I do is I simply walk around here, scooping up lava, and then when I need more, I just dig around the sides here. This is basically where I get all of the lava for that system here. I just go down there and grab it. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Um, all right. So, it, what, it's what makes these smelters so nice, but, uh, once again, I barely use the thing. <laughs> it's one of the only all the smelters in the world. I, I kind of did that, so me hopes of me using the space more. But guess what? My spawn point isn't here, so I don't use it. <laughs> and I can't set a spawn point here, because it's the nether. It's one of the most unique bases I have in this entire world, but it's so out of the way, sadly. Oh, man. Also, there's a head of me over there. Just a little head. <laughs> Oh, they're right back over here at the, uh, rail base. That was the one with all the lava on the ceiling. Uh, heading down this little tunnel here, we get to another failed project of mine that was supposed to be another major base, but, uh, just wound up never seeing fruition. Uh, I'm curious if the actual portal here is, uh, working or not, because if it's not, I'm just not gonna show it. It's just... Oh man, let's see. Is the portal working here? Yes, it is. Okay. In which case, this over here is a little base here that I wound up designing. This is right before episode 70. Um, in which case, what it was, it was supposed to be a little base of operations that I could work out of whilst designing all the way over here. Massive thing of half slabs. This was supposed to be the storage system. So what I did is I had an entire episode sitting down calculating how much, how many updates are going to be in this game at the absolute maximum through my lifespan, presuming that I wind up living to an average male age. I was like, okay, so here's about how long we would be looking at, here's how many updates it has been on average at that time, that has drastically decreased. Oh man, there hasn't been an update in a while, let me tell you, because I am on version 1.8.3, there hasn't been an update in a while, uh, in which case, uh, yeah, looking around at, um, all of this, there, I was like, okay, I'm gonna design all that out, how many chests there are gonna be, how many items could possibly be within those updates, how many updates there are per item, per time, got a life sp span from the next, like, 70 so years or whatever, and I was like, okay, this is what we'd be looking at, and then I designed the whole thing, made up how much space that would be, and then never used it. <laughs> uh, so this was supposed to be an absolutely enormous project that was supposed to withstand all of the storage needs I could ever possibly have for, like, decades. And I just never even, like, got into a process where I was good at starting it. Uh, but if I head down this tunnel for a very long way, we get to another very old project.
All the way down here is two other projects. So heading all the way over to this location is a project that I haven't worked on in a long time. This is a dig site for the nether for me to clear out a whole bunch of nether racks so I can begin designing a wither skeleton farm so that way I can get a whole bunch of skulls and begin making a bunch of beacons. Never really got to the good point where I was starting that project, but flowing all the way down this water for a little ways, uh, poking my head out and jumping a little bit. That pillar is supposed to go a little bit further up, but I guess I just never got the process of finishing it. And going down this little path here, it looks very ugly. That's because I never used this thing. I'd probably polish it if I did use it. But this is another small base of operations. This here is supposed to be, you could probably hear all the banging going around, but this is a blaze farm. So that way I can get XP from blazes. Aha, look at that. And blaze rods. The farm itself is not very good. What it does is it filters some water and filters all the blazes into this spot here. But the blazes often just die in the water, so eh, it, it's a mixed bag. But it's pretty good, I would say. It's like it could be a lot worse. The ba it, at matter of fact, was a lot worse at one point. But uh, yeah, I have this little pool of water here for whenever I wind up getting caught on fire. I don't know where that guy is. I think he's inside here. Yeah, none of this little iron bar, so I can look inside there. But yeah. Ah, uh, the base was not very good. <laughs> well, I shouldn't even say a base. It was an XP farm. It was from that little cycle of XP farms that I was making. That was just like, I need a new XP farm. And that blaze farm was one of those. Wasn't very good. So, cut it. And next up is a little bit of a split that I can wind up going. If I head all the way over here, I get to a very old device. This was how I got to above the bedrock some time ago. Along with a little stairway going all the way up there. And then if I walk all the way over here, another stairway up there. I have two stairways up there just because I want one even closer to the portal. In which case, if I follow some of the cobblestone around, there's that portal along with a torch trail. Uh, if I head all the way to this direction and going to be going up this ladder all the way up there, I'm going to be getting to a, I would say, fairly important farm in my world. Uh, because... This is a farm that I've tinkered with so many times. Oh my gosh, I think this farm's been redesigned like four times, three to four times. Uh, it was several times. This, but this farm was redesigned so many times. I just, I got so tired of it at one point. But eventually I finished it and it works and it's good. And that's what matters is that it works and it's good. <laughs> but if I head all the way up into this area here, just slowly going up the ladder. One of these days I'm probably going to wind up designing something a little bit better. But... Once I get all the way up here, this here is my new gold farm. So this is the redesign. Hold the golden rotten flesh falls into these chests over here. I craft them into blocks and ingots depending on how bulked up it is. And then I have these chests over here that I throw items into. Primarily rotten flesh. And then I keep all that rotten flesh stored up. And trade it to the clerics that I keep over at the main base. If I go up this trapdoor here, you can see the design of the farm. I'm not going to go all the way up there, but for anyone who is curious, it uses water streams. Because I have water streams everywhere in this world. So, <laughs> bowl bunch of water streams all the way up there. Oh, oh I almost killed myself there. <laughs> but if I head all the way back over there to the main portal and slowly regenerate my health... Alright, and then finally, since I'm always back out here at the main portal, this isn't the final location, but this is one of, I think, probably the second to last, I think, uh, is down this tunnel is going to wind up being two locations that are kind of related, in my opinion, all the way down the end of this tunnel. I'm, by the way, there's like a bunch of locations that I'm not going to be showing you, like, this is a Mesa base and like a very far mushroom island and a whole bunch of like things, and I'm just like, that's like, it's like a... 15 minute walk just to get there i'm not gonna make that walk and on top of that it's just like some sites for me to get like some small things but to go through this portal here this is the very first one it is going to wind up being whoop inside this little crevice here some mushroom mushrooms floating on the aisles there in which case uh, it is nighttime i should probably sleep uh but uh, something that is going to be very interesting once I jump out the window here. Wee! You are going to be noticing there's a bunch of mycelium there. It's a little hole on the side of this island that's kind of cut in half. And you might also notice that the water levels here are very different. 
But this is because this is a mushroom island that was cut in half due to world generation. Because <laughs> over here is world old world gen, over here is new world gen. Kinda new, it's not that new. But this is a mushroom island that was cut in half and I thought that was absolutely hilarious. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make a base here. And then never finish the base here. I think you guys might be able to understand the pattern with me in this world. I make a base and then just wind up using the main base. <laughs> but yeah, this was supposed to be another base. This is like a little seal room that I'm supposed to walk out into. And then there's supposed to be a bunch of stairs that are going off in different locations. Never did anything with it. Wish I did. There's all every base I wish I did more with. But guess what? I just want to keep working on the main base. And then, going a little ways over to this portal, this is a portal that is actually used a whole bunch. That is because this here is actually a farm. I have some wolves here that wind up killing skeletons that wind up falling through this little slot here. There is a spawner through these little slots here. They spawn and go up this water stream right here and wind up falling all the way down and landing right here. The wolves they can make stand up, they'll kill the skeletons, and then their drops will wind up filtering down these hoppers, and they wind up going into these chests here, which I have some auto sorters in the back there, I don't know, uh, you can kind of see them, but yes, um, yeah, okay, so it goes to about here, I perma, oh, wait, skeleton fell down, aha, skeletons are falling down, in which case if I stand one of the wolves up here, whoop, they begin killing skeletons. In which case, after the skeleton dies, because they're on a enchanting table, I had to do a whole bunch of experimentation with uh, what were the best kind of blocks that worked here. I found that an enchanting table was best. In which case, uh, that is what the farm over here is for. The enchanting table is missing here. <laughs> I can let, I'll let you make one guess as where the enchanting table there went. <laughs> Back at the main base portal right here, if I wind up going all the way across the little water here, and going all the way to that corner all the way up there, I'm going to wind up seeing this little division of pressure plates that I wound up creating just simply because I was wanting to keep that open just in case I wanted to restore the, uh, restore the water there. Because if I made it three wide, it would make it just a lot more difficult to do that. So I was just like, eh, I'm just not going to bother. In which case, heading all the way down here, there's a portal. Aha, portal. Uh, and hopping through the portal here, we are going to be getting to the end portal. Aha, I was wondering if anyone remembered that I have an end portal. Jump all the way through here, we get to a little dig site, in which case, I think if I had this direction, I wind up getting to what I'm looking for. Yes, 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 indeed. Uh, but yes, out here is the end island. There isn't much here on the end island itself, but if I jump all the way down this ladder here... We we there's a water thing that I can jump into, but for some reason I'm not. There we go. And I run down this little strip of land. There is no railings here, so I have to be extra careful. And I mean extra careful. Why did I decide to stall no railings? Beyond me. Do not ask, because I do not have answers. But if I were to go a little ways down here, you will begin slowly seeing something in the void appearing. Uh, this here is the final and last base that I made in this world. Actually, I guess I made the Mushroom Island base after this one, but this is the last one, I promise. <laughs> this is the last location, this is the last base that I... And yeah, the, but yeah, this here is Epsilon Base that I believe I called. I do not remember its nickname, but I did have a nickname, because I give my nick nicknames to a lot of my base. I have the Main Base, which is a very creative name, I know. Then I also have, um, uh the uh transit base and then i have uh the water nether base uh and over here it is called the void archive wow what a name <laughs> uh heading all the way down here we are going to wind up seeing this is a enderman farm uh enderman will fall down here and then you punch them and they wind up dropping and dying at a single hit so you can just sit there and collect a enderman xp off of a single punch once again, one of my XP farms, I use it a little bit, not as much, and then I have a bunch of random stuff here, like I have cell 005, or cell 0005, a cobblestone generator, and then cell uh, 0004, a fishing pond, which is also an infinite water source, uh, it's pulling double duty. Um, and then if I head all the way over to this location here, I wind up having... Cell 0003, which is a utility room. 
that there is a mushroom I got all the way out here, so that way I can restock on mushroom stew, along with a whole bunch of supplies, including an ender chest, that I can use all the way out here. But there is a uh, fairly big problem as well, uh, if you notice all the way out here, 0002, an enchanting table, uh, so that way I could use it with the Enderman. Uh, well, I believe 0001 is just the Enderman farm, let's see, it's very easy to find out. Uh, 0001, Ender Pearl farm, indeed. But yes, this is kind of where I get the Ender Pearls in my world, just kind of punch these guys. Uh, the XP is fine here, I guess, it's nothing to write home about. And I don't exactly build here a lot, sadly. This is another one of those bases I think is super cool. If I hit F3 here, you'll see that I'm at 0 0.5 on the Y level. So this is as low as you can really get without, like, standing on a trap door or something. Which, whoo-wee, that is, uh, risky. But yes, this here is the final base, Base Epsilon. Uh, one of those bases that I always kind of want to do more with. Uh, back here at the hole... The only real thing I guess I could wind up showing you guys is if I weave all the way around here and head over to the actual uh, center aisle section, which has my uh, exit back to the mainland. I think it's on the... yeah, it's right over here. So this is how I get back over to my main base, jump through here, skip the end credits, and boom, bed was obstructed or missing. And this is my little spawn room. Aha! Project shown. <laughs> but with me showing all the way back up here, guys, that is probably going to be doing it for today's episode. Except for, I guess, this little thing. I didn't get to show off this. This is kind of a little area, I guess, underneath the main base. I'll be showing this off. In which case, uh, this is the first ever base I made in this world. Ooh, the door's broken. Lovely. I never got to notice that. <laughs> yeah, there's a door here little, like, table and boat. This is the first ever base I made in this world. If you go watch episode one, this is uh, the little base that I made uh, to survive the night. So that's that little base. And all the way over here, I guess I have one final thing. I'm just thinking of all these random things that I have over around here. Is uh, one of the older projects. This over here is my, uh, what's this called? The Wall of Answers, where I do a bunch of math in an episode. And I'm like, okay, this is how I'm going to do a project. And then over here is like a little blueprint to that old warehouse idea. A bunch of random stuff in this world that I didn't get to show you guys. And that's like one of them that I was like, oh yeah, I guess I'm, since I'm passing through here. But like, there's so many things in this world that I did not get to show you guys. Simply because they're so small and minute and out of the way that they don't really matter. Uh, but since I have showed you guys like some of the biggest projects that I have in my world... Uh, I always say at the end of my episodes, if you guys want to see me do anything, then be sure to tell me, but there's so many projects that are going on in my world that there's so many ideas that you could wind up recommending that I go work on, but the problem is, I don't really do, I, I don't go to those projects very often, so not a lot of people know about them, but with this world tour, hopefully a lot of you guys finally got to see some of my older projects that are happening in this world, so I now get to say, since closing off this episode... If there's anything you guys want to see me do, be sure to tell me. I always love hearing your guys' suggestions. There's always a billion projects I have going on in this world, and I would love to work on any single one of them. Just I want to hear what you guys have to say. But with all of this now nice and said, guys, that's probably going to be doing it for today's episode. I do hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll be seeing you guys here in the next one. Uh, so long. Uh, see ya. Uh, bye.